of weeks ago, I did a segment on this channel talking about Doctor Who costume preferences, and early on in that video, I made the very, very foolish assessment that Peter Capaldi's Twelfth Doctor's costumes took a John Nathan Turner approach, as in, he basically had a Doctor costume as opposed to numerous variants over the course of his tenure. And if you watch that segment, you'll know that over the span of that video, I was convinced by my chat and I looked at the images and I was turned around by that. And then recently, a viewer of mine called Alex very, very kindly shared with me a Google document which outlines all of the different variants of the Twelfth Doctor's costume. You know, you've got this one from the first scene of The Caretaker. You've got the Caretaker Cole Hill scenes. You've got Kill the Moon opening and closer. You've got the Mummy on the Orient Express, etc. A really thorough document, including where all of these outfits came from, what brands they are, where you can get them, etc, etc. It's a really cool document. So as somebody who is obviously the number one peak fashionista of Doctor Who YouTube, I decided that we'd do a tier list ranking the best 12th Doctor outfits. We're going to go through this in chronological order. Uh, and chat, I would very much like your help with all of this as well. Right, so... <clears throat> Uh, the first outfit we're going for is the opener one from Deep Breath, when he's wearing Matt Smith's outfit. Honestly, when it comes to Doctors wearing their predecessor's outfit, Peter Capaldi is one of the better ranking ones. I think some of the weaker ones are like Peter Davison wearing Tom Baker's outfit, or, you know, or... um. Uh, or Sylvester McCoy wearing Colin Baker's outfit. I don't think those fit, but this one looks absolutely terrific. Number one fashionista, I thought that was Josh Snares. Josh Snares wishes that they could be as incredibly fashion. <laughs> nah, I'm kidding. Right, so, but a tier list. I'm gonna have... Billy, I was doing tier lists while you were still in the womb. Okay, Billy? While you were studying being a kiwi -er, I was studying the blade, okay? So, um, I'm th I honestly think A tier. I think if he was wearing the 11th Doctor attire from the first two seasons, you know, the tweed jacket and the braces and stuff, it would be quite lower. But the Series 7 Part B, the purple jacket and the coat, he looks so cool in this one. Brookie. <laughs> uh, thank you, Billy, for, for checking for checking this. And I've, I've, I've been enjoying the latest episodes of Review of Death. Listen to Review of Death on all of your podcast app of choices and also the YouTube.com. Right, so, yeah, I, I think this is a pretty indisputable A tier. It's not the best of the Capaldi era, but it's, it's not even middling either. This is absolutely terrific. Right, so... Isn't this Snowman? Oh, either way, it's Series 7 part. It's it's what he was wearing um, uh, at the end of the, um, of the... of It's what he was studying in the Night of the Doctor. No, the Time of the Doctor, sorry. Well, you studied the Blade. I studied the Blade too. <laughs> we were classmates. Oh, no, we're going to get to class sooner or later. We have accounted for class. Okay, next up. This is what is considered to be the definitive Peter Capaldi costume. This is what I think of like in my head when I think of the Twelfth Doctor's outfit. So this is what he wears for the closing scene in Deep Breath and Into the Dalek and a lot of the promotional material as well. So he's got a navy wool coat, he's got cardigan uh, with the shirt trousers and the brogues as well, but they're not pictured here. What I think sells this one, this is also an A tier one, I think, because there are ones lower down that I think are deserving of the S tier, but this is, once again, a very easy A tier. I think what sells it, and what sells a lot of Capaldi's outfits over the tenure, though, are we including Capaldi's hair? No, we should probably do that at some point, though. Well, I can't believe you mixed up Night and Time of the Doctor. It's not like they're a bunch of similarly named episodes, right? Yeah, I'm a fake fan, I apologise. I, I agree that later Capaldi hair is better than short Capaldi hair, but either way, this costume works for two reasons. One, it's the lack of tie or bow tie for the undershirt, which is a statement that is, like, anti- 11th doctor no bow ties bow ties aren't cool i'm a i'm a 100 percent renegade time lord and also the red under like the underlining of the jacket it's so cool the, the red silk shot lining uh according to the description from this google doc which i'm going to be referring to 100 percent rebel time lord i love it and of course the pose is now basically iconic when i got my autograph from colin bacon colin bacon 
I'm tired, you can tell. When Colin Baker gave me his autograph at London Comic Con last year, he was like, oh, do you also want a photo? Do you want to do a Doctor Who pose? And we did the fingers to the camera and everything. And so I like how this has now just become the Doctor Who pose, even from other classic doctors which i love very very much this is what he wears for robot of sherwood and for the corridor scenes in uh the caretaker so this is a cashmere crombie um uh, navy wool with a red silk shot lining inside as well deep purple shirt with navy slim fit trousers and more brogues he's very good with the brogues honestly there's not a lot about this costume that I dislike. And as you can see from the Google Doc as well, it looks good buttoned up or open. This works both ways. I like a flexible outfit. I don't think it's as good as the other ones, but I honestly can't see anything wrong with this one, at least from just outward appearances. You can even see the belt there as well. I think there's a, there's a nice little belt there. So yeah, this episode is sponsored by Vogue. No, if anything, this episode is sponsored by um, by Brogues, by, by Loke Brogues, H&M and Paul Smith because that's where a lot of these outfits came from but yeah honestly this is a good one there's not too much I can complain about here so moving further down uh, this is the outfit from Time Heist which is very similar I think it's in fact I think it's actually the same coat but it's got the darker shirt underneath I I almost want to put it in A because I, I just like the darker shirt but I'm going to keep it in B. It's basically a very similar outfit. It's just a different undershirt. But it's it still looks distinctive enough. Anyway, so there are some costumes in this document that are just one and done. For example, this first scene in The Caretaker, the binary star planet scene. But you can't really see what he's wearing properly because he's all sat down, hunched up. He's got the chain on him. So for scenes like this i'm going to be ignoring them so i apologize feel free to make your own tier list but his actual proper costume for the caretaker is this light brown warehouse coat with a black wool holes paul smith jumper underneath honestly i like the jumper and it's fitting for the character i want to i'm not a big you know i'm not a big fan of the coat but it's appropriate for the caretaker. And when you think of the caretaker as a story, you think of this costume. I don't want to rank it down because of personal preference. I just think it's a costume that does what it should do. So I'm going to be putting this... Uh, Chad, I'm seeing, I'm seeing stuff like B, C, and D. I'm glad that we don't agree that it's like... I'm glad that we agree that it doesn't belong in either extreme. Like This is not S tier. This is not F tier. This is somewhere in the middle. Chat, help me out here. Um, this costume and the bumbling murderer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're not going to be judging um, the episode itself properly. But as it is, I, I, you know, CD does its job but has no flair. I think that's a good description. For example, in this picture, he's got that wrist device, which looks pretty cool. But it's not what I'd really properly consider part of the costume. Like, for example, would you count the sonic screwdriver as part of the costume? You know... Okay, let's let's meet in the middle here, chat. Let's go for C. But we're agreed that it, it it's a decent costume that does its job. Okay, so this one, we're going to go for the opener and closing scenes from Kill the Moon. So this is a navy wool cash crombie coat with the red um with the red silver lining on the inside. But what really distinguishes this is the dark navy um point collar shirt with the polka dots from Bud Shirt Makers. Michael Teffley is, is saying S tier. I'm, I almost want to agree. He doesn't wear it for very long. It is basically it bookends Kill the Moon. But when I think of like the Doctor in the TARDIS, this is a this is a costume I think of. I'm almost inclined to say A tier. He doesn't really wear it for long enough that I consider this to be a definitive Peter Capaldi costume. But it's really cool. I like the polka dots. All the cosplayers I follow love this shirt. Yeah, yeah, I think it's pretty easy to recreate, but it's distinctive. Like, you remember the polka dots from, from Kill the Moon. I'm going to say something a little bit more controversial here. The spacesuit outfit. I think it fits and matches a lot of Doctors. I think David Tennant looks great in it. I think Jodie Whittaker looks great in it. I don't think Capaldi sells it that well. And I also say that there are other spacesuits or practical 
hard uh, or practical suits that he wears over the span of his era that fit him and suit him better i'm putting this in d tier i think the outfit is cool i'm glad that he got to wear it but i think that there are other space suits later on that he wears which are suited much better so we'll talk about that later. I hope she's got aware of it sometime into the tradition at this point. Yeah, and I also hope that one day Big Finish does an audio adventure with Christopher Eccleston where they give him the spacesuit in a, like, Photoshop, even though it doesn't really make sense because he gets it from the, the base from the Satan Pit and the Impossible Planet. I think that's where he gets it from and he just wheels out for special occasions. Although, to be fair... Dan the Plasterer in Flux, or in, in The Power of the Doctor, did break the helmet. So, or then then again, the helmet broke in Waters of Mars as well. So clearly he's got a stockpile of, of helmets somewhere. Either way, right, let's talk about the Mummy on the Orient Express. This is like his evening dinner wear. The double-breasted evening jacket with the reveal lapels. The charcoal waistcoat with the white and diamond pattern shirt. He's got a silk, uh, he's got a black silk cravat and he's got slim fit black trousers. This is boss, I think. I think it looks better in the promotional material than it does in the episode itself, but he still wears it so well. But there's something about Capaldi in a waistcoat that doesn't look quite right. It's a pro like the caretaker, it's appropriate for the episode. I, I'm going to go for B tier, but Flippant says easy S tier. Do we hear any S tiers or A tiers? Do we hear any more? Because if I hear any more, I may put it in A tier. Also, there's very few costumes from this era that I dislike, so you're not going to be seeing many on the bottom half of this tier list. Are we hearing A tier? For mummy, okay, you know, I this is a diplomatic channel. Flippant compromises with A. Yeah, okay, we'll go for the A tier. A cigarette case filled with jelly babies makes it an A. I, I don't know if we should include props because, like I said, we'd have to include stuff from the caretaker as well and also maybe the sonic sunglasses. We'll talk about that later. But the jelly babies cigarette case is very cool. If Peter wore it, it's instantly an A. That makes the tier list so much easier. A, 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 S. A, 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 S. Anyway, right. Let's go for this costume which has multiple appearances. So this is primarily from In the Forest of the Night. This is a navy wool cashmere crombie coat with the black wool holes jumper, t-shirt, trousers, etc. underneath. So he wears this in Listen, the caretaker, uh, in Clara's bedroom and in the closing scenes. He wears this in the Forest of the Night and in the last scene in Death in Heaven. I think this looks pretty cool, but the, the, the shirt is a bit bland. And I think that the tighter fitting jackets are better. B, C, we even got an A tier as well. I'm thinking C tier. Remember, they're all pretty good. But I think in relation to each other, he's got better coats and he's got better jackets. I think C is pretty reasonable. But I still like this costume. Right, this one is what he wears in the last scene in The Mummy on the Orient Express. He wears this in Flatline and in Dark Water, Death in Heaven. This is the navy wool cashmere crombie coat, navy dark wool cashmere waistcoat with the navy silk shot backing. This is the white point collar shirt from Bud Shirt Makers and slim fit navy trousers. I think this is maybe an A or B tier. It's very similar to what he wears in uh, Into the Dalek. I think, once again, you know, it's basically, this is what you think of when you think of Capaldi, where he doesn't have the bow tie, but he's got the buttoned up shirt, and the cuffs are coming out of his wrists, which are also here as well. I like this a lot as well. Bad story, good costume. Right, time to go a little bit more controversial. Let's go for Last Christmas. This is a navy wool cashmere crombie coat. Uh, which has got the red navy lining in it as well. This He's also got the hoodie, the black wool zip up from All Saints. He's also got a jumper along with the hoodie, t-shirts, trousers, boots. Honestly, I like the coat, but I don't like the hoodie. I can't put this in D tier, but it feels like he has way too many layers on and I don't like the hoodie with the coat. So I think I'm going to go for C tier. 
the cuffs coming off the wrist reminds me of Pertwee. I actually think that was a deliberate choice as well. You know, Pertwee is, of course, Doctor Who's super fan. He was the president of a Doctor Who Appreciation Society. Yeah, I agree with Flippant. It doesn't mix well. Capaldi pulls it off because he's 100% Rebel Time Lord, but I think having the hoodie and the jumper and the coat is a bit much. You pick two or maybe just one, you don't go for all three. It's cold at Christmas. He's a Time Lord. He can put up with this. Right. Next up, we've got the Magician's Apprentice and the Witch's Familiar. So you've got the You've got a coat, you've got a hoodie, you also got the light grey Misty Mountain shirt from Label Lab. You've also got a undershirt, a pink undershirt here from H&M. And you've got checkered trousers as well from, uh, yeah, you've got, you've got checkered trousers as well, according to these images. Honestly, when I think of this costume, I just see Midlife Crisis Doctor, and I don't like Midlife Crisis Doctor. I almost want to put this in detail, and this has got nothing to do with the quality of the episode. I just don't really like the trousers. I don't like the pink undershirt. And like I said, having the hoodie with the coat as well, it doesn't really match. I'm putting this in detail. Next up, we have the Under the Lake or Before the Flood outfit, which does also have a coat, hoodie, and a jumper, so it is quite busy. But it's the coat with the with the red lining. And I think he almost gets away with it better. Because the layers look so similar. The trousers are Troutony. Yeah, but Troughton is not 100% Rebel Time Lord. Troughton is not the oncoming storm, is he? I, I agree with um, Lee and Tiny in the chat. I'm thinking B. The red lining's awesome, of course. But you have that with other outfits as well over the span of his tenure. Like I said, it, it's a bit busy, but it's one of the better versions of busy. Anyway, right. This is also... Um, uh, actually, this is very... Okay, I'm just looking at this now. His costume from The Girl Who Died, it looks very similar to The Magician's Apprentice one. What's different about it? So, he's wearing Doc Martens instead of Brogues. And he's wearing slightly darker trousers. I don't even know why... I, brought these both in to be honest they're so similar i'm putting this in c as well for basically the same reasons i think the trousers are better because they're a bit darker but honestly it's yeah it, it's it's basically yeah it's for the same reasons s tier really would you put this in s tier it's if i put this in s tier i'd have to put this in s tier and i'm not having that uh, yeah, I'm putting this in D tier as well. I can't... These two are so similar, they have to be in the same tier. I need to be consistent here. Right, next up, we've got the woman who lived. Once again, we've got a coat, hoodie, and a jumper. But it's the black wool holds jumper as well, with dark trousers. And he's got brogues on as well. Um, Yeah, C tier. Like... It, yeah, it, it's like it's basically the same. It's basically similar to Under the Lake and Before the Flood. It just doesn't look as it just doesn't look as classy. So I think I'm going to go for the C tier there. I'm seeing some B and C tiers here. Yeah. Okay. Next up. Okay, this might be a bit more controversial. We've got the Zygon Invasion and Zygon Inversion, which once again has the coat hoodie and the jumper, but it's got a yeah. I think it's a, it's a different coat with a different darker red underlining. I know that this is also considered to be like a definitive Series 9 costume, apart from the finale one. I'm thinking C tier as well. Series 9, obviously. You know, these are fine. These are still good costumes. I, ju I just don't know if I'm a fan of the hoodie jumper and the and the coat. I don't know if, I, if I'm a fan of the combination. It just... He must have been bloody boiling. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different coat material, different brand of trousers. Okay, yeah, yeah. But on, they're very similar. I think I'm going to go for the seater here as well. Right, next up. Uh, so he wears this number in Sleep No More and also in Oxygen when he's not in the spacesuit. So this is another coat hoodie jumper. Yeah, okay. Th this is basically the... Yeah, it, he had... Okay, he had very similar costumes over the span of series 12. Yeah, I'm, I'm put, I've got to put this in the same tier. <laughs> Costume designer, should we have a hoodie, jumper, or a coat? Yes. So, yeah, this has got to go in the same one as the Zygon one. I, I like this look. It's 
it's just not really doing it for me. This is one of the very few one and done costumes that I've put on this list. This is from the opening scene of Face the Raven, where he's wearing a coat and a hoodie. So he's got rid of the jumper, which is good. And because he's got rid of the jumper, he's got a black space shark shirt underneath. You don't see it that clearly, but it is a shirt with a massive shark on it, which means it instantly has to go up to A tier. And he's got Doc Martens on as well. Now, we now come to what is considered to be the definitive Peter Capaldi look. He wears this in Face the Raven, Heaven Sent, when he arrives on Gallifrey and Hellbent, Husbands of River Song, Children in Need 2016, The Pilot, when he's in the real world in Extremis, and he's in the propaganda video in The Lie of the Land. This is S tier, S tier, S tier. This is <clears throat> the maroon velvet crombie with magenta shot lining coat, a black wool waistcoat, a white spear point collar, slim navy trousers with Doc Martens. This is unequivocally an S tier outfit. And honestly, there's some great elements from other costumes, you know, like the shirt, the slim fit, the waistcoat that he's worn, like in Mummy on the Orient Express, but it's the velvet jacket, man. And I think if we agree on anything as a unified live stream this evening, it's that this is an S tier outfit. Okay, anyone in the chat who is opposed to this S tier outfit, let us know. If, if you are opposed, let us know, and then my mods will ban you. I'm, I'm kidding. Mods, we're not banning anyone. Uh, William, my dude, you're stopping by to say hi. Hope you're having a class day. Thank you, Ethan. I hope you're doing well. Hope you're doing well as well. Fix the Wi-Fi F tier. Get out of here. Get out of town. Um, we're looking for the outlier. We still don't have any F tier outfits. That will come eventually, but we, we, we don't have any yet. They knew they were onto a winner here, which is why he wears it so much. When he's wearing this costume for Children in Need in 2016, this is like a definitive costume that makes it into the public consciousness. Easy, easy, easy. Right, next up. This is the outfit that he wears when he's in the diner in Hellbent and also some of the Gallifrey scenes. So this is a pinstripe double-breasted jacket with a white shirt uh, he's not done the top button for some reason. Slim fit cotton trousers and Doc Martens. I don't like this look. It's a bit like The Caretaker, where it's kind of appropriate. I just don't like it. I'm almost tempted to F tier it, but he, he's got that Time Lord swagger. It looks pretty cool with the guitar. I'm just not a big fan of it. Damn, I, I, I'm willing to negotiate and we can bump this up to C tier if you want. I just, when you contrast this with what he wears in the episode, it's kind of like, it's kind of night and day here. I can't put these too close to each other because I think there's such a drastic drop off in quality. I, I was going to put this in D tier, maybe even F tier, but... I'll, I'll put it in C because I know that it has a bit of love in the chat. Even if it's not like unequivocal love that puts it in the S or A tier or something. But, you, you know, I think C. I think that's fair. Right, next up. He has a few one-off costumes at the end of Hellbent in the closing scene. And in The Husbands of River Song when he goes to Derillium. But it looks very similar to what he wore in Mummy on the Orient Express. But next up... Here's an outfit from the season premiere of Class from the episode for Tonight We Might Die. So this is basically bog standard 12th Doctor. Black coat, buttoned up shirt, Doc Martens, slim fit trousers. This is basically 12th Doctor, but you're in a hurry. I think it's, this is solid B tier. No, <laughs> it goes on and on. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you. But yeah, it's it's fine. This is basically, if you needed the 12th Doctor to appear in a piece of spin-off media, this is what you get him to wear. This is pretty uncontroversial. He wore multiple costumes in The Return of Doctor Mysterio. 
Also, what I will say, there's some really cool costumes that Peter Capaldi wore for promotional material, but it was only in promotional material. Like, he never wore this costume in an actual episode of the show. He may have worn an amalgamation of it, or like different out or different parts of it, but this is um this is a promo exclusive, so I won't be putting it on the list. It's got to be something that he practically wore on set that works as a practical costume. Right, next up, we have multiple outfits from the pilot. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something that I promised myself I wouldn't, but I'm going to put an outfit that has a coat, hoodie, and a jumper in A tier. But believe it or not, this outfit that he wears in the pilot according to this document that was very kindly sent to me this black velvet with peak lapels and cornflower blue silk lining coat with the uh with the wool zip-up hoodie he only wears for one scene he only wore this for one scene but when i think of like capaldi in early series 10 this is just the outfit i think of so I'm putting this in A tier. Now, obviously, if you were to maybe go scene by scene from the pilot, you may be wear this, uh, you may see him wear this multiple times, but according to this document, he only wears this in the lecture scene, because in the book throwing in the vault scene, he's got another setup. In two deleted scenes, he's got another outfit. When he goes to take a photograph of Bill's mum, he's got another outfit on. For the new term, he's got another outfit. And for the puddle scene towards the end, he's got a frock coat on. He has so many costume changes in the pilot, and I didn't really notice that. And the fact that this one, I think, is the definitive pilot one means it has to rank up. I thought he used it in Smile. He's got a slightly different one in Smile. We'll go over that in a moment. Come on, Stephen. Yeah, God's sake. He has so... <laughs> what, I will say, what I will say, though, what I like about the pilot, though, is because it does take... Uh, it does take place over the span of several months because it goes from different terms. So, yeah, he wears different outfits. But because this is the one from the pilot that stands out, these two don't really stand out as much. And this is very similar to the other one, except he he does have a hoodie on, but he also has a blue John Lewis waistcoat. And I don't think it works. I, You know, he, he pulls it off well. I just don't like the blue. In fact, the more I look at the blue, the more I dislike it. I might even put this down to D tier. I don't like the blue, and we don't have that much happening in this F tier at the moment, so I kind of need to flirt with it a little bit. Actually, I'm looking ahead at all of these outfits. I don't think there's a single F tier in this. I think my only F tier would have been this one from the magician's apprentice and the witch's familiar but you folks talked me out of it so i think we can actually get rid of this tier clear the row yeah there we go we no longer have an f tier capaldi's outfits were so good we don't have a fail state we only have various degrees of passing but yeah so i'm not a fan of this blue one it's it's fine I'm just not a fan of it. So this is when he's running around with Nardole, frock coat, hoodie, waistcoat, Doc Martens. I'm putting this in C tier. It looks a bit befuddling. It he look he doesn't look right in it. Nah, so I'm putting the, I'm putting this here. Right. Um. Yeah. So this I I think yeah D tier it. I, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna D tier. He doesn't look, he doesn't look right in it. So for smile. And for the closing scene of the pilot and the opening scene of th of um and the opening scene of Thin Ice, frock coat, hoodie, jumper. This looks a bit midlife crisisy. It looks better than the other ones from the pilot, but I I've got to put this in C tier. Uh, and remember, it it looks like he's got more bad costumes than not, but these are there there are no bad Peter Capaldi costumes. I think we're just establishing this here. Looks like he got off an actual roller coaster. It does a little bit in these costumes. I like the red. I th what actually, I might put this in B tier now because I've just decided that for the red, this is basically the more casual version of the suits that he wears with the with the burgundy and red lining. So it's thematically appropriate as as he gets older as this incarnation of the Doctor, he loosens up somewhat, which explains all of the hoodies and the shirts and stuff. But the red lining is reminiscent of his early days. The, okay. Yeah, this is going to be tear. Okay. He looks rushed in the... Yeah. 
it's it's on the lower echelon of B tier. The suit the suit is cooler, hundred percent. He looks better in the suit, but look. The more I think about it, I can't justify having this outfit on the same tier as the caretaker or last Christmas. Next up, thin ice. So, top hat, although the top hat is optional, with the black velvet and peak lapels, cornflower blue silk lining frock coat, waistcoat, shirt, cravat, trousers, with the Doc Martens. I'm thinking S tier. He slaps in this outfit. When I think of historical Capaldi, this is what I'm thinking of. And I'm seeing a bit of A and I'm seeing a bit of B, but I, I love him in this look. He looks so comfortable in the cravat. He looks more comfortable in this outfit than he does in Mummy on the Orient Express, even though it is similar formal wear and he's got the cravat and everything. But I love it. I, in these images, the hat is of, is, of course, optional. You don't need it. And it comes, the action figure comes included with top hats and two mugs. But I I think S tier, literally, about it literally he, he does. But yeah, I, I love this look that I thought he wore this all the time. So it looks so defining that he probably should have worn this all the time. But yeah, and he's got, um, he's got the ascot as well. This looks so cool. Slap and slaps racist. Yes. One second. This is not the S tier. This is the slaps racist tier. The <laughs> now I know that this doctor, this outfit doesn't, but this is the S tier. <laughs> so he punches. I think. Okay. So it's it's more of a broad term. <laughs> the slaps racist tier. <laughs> That's what S T S. Yeah, there we go. Okay, chat. I love you. Thank you. Thank you, Flippant, for for, for making that canon. Uh, right. The as <laughs> the Abzantium War was using slurs. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, this is the diving suit. I think he suits this suit better than the actual spacesuit that he wore in Kill the Moon. He looks really good in this. This is like really comfortable. Now, obviously, this is not a definitive Doctor spacesuit or anything, so I don't think I can put it any higher than B tier. But I think he looks good in this suit. And, you know, once again, when you think of Thin Ice, the disparity between the top hat and the diving suit, it gives the episode its own sense of, like, Doctorly identity. You're saying C tier, but, you know... If I put this in C tier, I've got to put the Empress of Mars 1 in B tier, though. Hmm... I don't know what brand the diving suit is, so I couldn't really tell you that. But I'll put it here. Is there a reason other than budget they kept using the same orange spacesuit? I just think that fans gravitated towards it. I think that they liked the orange spacesuit. He wore it, the Tenth Doctor wore it in at least two separate stories, in Waters of Mars and in the Satan Pit. So the fact that he had a spacesuit on the TARDIS that he'd worn multiple times, it just sort of organically worked by passing it along from Doctor to doctor so it makes sense three stories what, what was the other story that the 10th doctor wore it in waters of mars and the satan pit 42 of course yes do we no 42 was a different spacesuit lean you yes 42 was a different spacesuit it was very similar chip no uh, it was a different spacesuit it was it was redder and it had like the plastic accentuations on the helmet so yeah so for it's not for it's a different spacesuit in 42 so it was just impossible plans on waters of mars but because the 10th doctor over the course of a couple of years had stories where he got into very similar looking spacesuits it passed on appropriately to matt smith's 11th doctor in hyde and because a pattern a trend had developed then it made sense for the 12th doctor to have it in in kill the moon i'd be curious if in kill the moon or in the hyde script they actually say the spacesuit that he's worn previously or if they just mentioned a spacesuit and they just the the costume team just utilized it anyway right this is the costume in knock knock which according to this document is the 42nd outfit so my god no i was so wrong he capaldi does not have just a couple of outfits like in the jnt era so i like it it's got the black jumper, the black wool holes jumper from Paul Smith, with the black velvet crombie coat. 
he's got a shirt on underneath but i don't see it in these images so b i'm, th I'm yeah b or c tier it's a solid outfit it does feel like a similar outfit to what he wore in class but a more informal one a bit more casual this does look like an outfit that he would wear while going to his friend bill's like flat i like it i like it anyway now this is an outfit he only wore in one scene but i love it all the same this is the outfit that i think he should have worn at the end of hell bent when he goes to gallifrey this is the extremist outfit where he's got the battered coat it's described here distressed gray linen textured crombie with a black silk lining with a bud shirt maker's white shirt he's got a t-shirt on underneath but you can't see it and the and he's got doc martens but because the coat the jacket it looks so weathered it looks so worn it looks like he's taking this out of the closet to visit missy at her funeral or her execution i like it i like this a lot <laughs> that jacket is distressed there true i like it a lot i'm i'm tempted to a tier it i think that this is it's so simple but the fact that the jacket is so distressed, is so weathered, it works. I don't think it slaps racists, but I think it's it's a high tier. Capaldi hated that. Is that true? Do we have like a do we have an inter do we have a, an interview about it? Timothy Crail, I don't know about the untucked shirt. Oh yeah, that's a point. The shirt's untucked. That's actually a bit distressing, really, because he's going to Missy's execution in this really nice jacket he's not tucked in the shirt they got this coat from primark that's why capaldi hated it is that true but if that coat's from primark i might get it no actually ah oh, the document doesn't say where it's from the t-shirts from h&m apparently the brogues are doc martins it doesn't say where the jacket's from though is it primark it is not true i'm kidding don't give me hope i could have bought that it's a custom coat either way, i love the coat i love the jacket i love it but the untucked shirt oh he just heard missy was being executed while on the toilet <laughs> so he runs he's got a bit of toilet paper under the doc martins um i mean he knew she wouldn't die true so he's formal but he's he doesn't want to look like he's too invested the third doctor would never have allowed himself to be seen so disheveled true if this was the delgado master's funeral and the third doctor was attending he would have gone full out for it i still think a tier because that jacket is so good the the cuffs going through the sleeve that's just classic 12th doctor the untucked shirt holds it back so it's like a low a tier but i i really like this this is one of the few outfits that is only present in one scene but i liked it so much i put it on the tier list much like the shirt with the shark on it he was wet he was meant to wear the linen coat in the series 10 photo shoot but he hated it so much they put him in a, diff a different one where's this trivia coming from uh lex Afax? i i i want to see these citations send them to me on twitter because i feel like this is a whole corner of doctor who trivia that i i should be privy to he wore that in live the land as well maybe did he one second he did yes i yes i apologize he did yeah he, uh, outfit 46 he wears this in the past montage in world enough in time and in the lie of the land i think i've messed up with this tier list this is better because he's got the waistcoat but that coats i love it he wears it so well right we need to fix this list um okay just say for the sake of argument just for the sake of this tier list that the a tier that i'm giving this outfit is the one from the lie of the land with the waistcoat okay I, it's not in the list i apologize but that that's that's what we're doing in the fade out regen yeah the and yeah, the fake out regeneration this is a tier it's it's that version that i'm i'm talking about because it's just the jacket it's just the jacket that i really really like okay next up the outfit from Extremis, when he's in the simulation. So this is the hoodie with a magenta lining. 
he's got a jumper on, the black wool hose jumper. Honestly, if you were to get the black wool hose jumper from Paul Smith, you could cosplay about 90% of Capaldi's outfits. So yeah, B tier. I'm thinking B tier as well. This does seem like a happy medium between the casual pilot outfits and the more suited and booted formal one. This is a nice middle ground. I like this quite a bit. He's got the Doc Martens on as well, which is basically your standard at this point for the 12th Doctor. He's got a long sleeve shirt, but you can't really tell. Although in this photo, he's got a black shirt on. And it's just poking out from under. So it seems accurate to his other shirts. I'm happy to have this in B tier. Okay, chat, I need your help with this one. Pyramid at the end of the world. He's got the frock coat, which looks really cool. And it's even got a blue silk lining. But it's the red floral shirt. I don't know if I like it. And Hans, the is the shirt any good? I don't know. Like, it's memorable. Like, when I see this shirt on the Peter Capaldi's Doctor, I think this is Pyramid at the End of the World, but... That screaming pick is meme fuel. <laughs> it is a bit, isn't it? Lesbian aren't fit. I've never heard that phrasing, but now I can't think of anything else that would really describe it. I like it, but it doesn't match with the coat. I'm inclined to agree. To be fair, he did wear this while blind. So he doesn't know what he's wearing. Is it deliberately bad? Because that could be really clever. I'm thinking C tier. Because, you know, I don't want to put it in detail because, you know, it, it's it's memorable. It's not very often he re he wears a red shirt. The shirt looks lumpy. It to be, Like I said, he's blind. He's not ironed it. He's, he's not at the chance. He's blind. Okay, stop being so ableist. I'm, I'm only kidding. But yeah, yeah, it's not the best. Next up, we have got the Martian spacesuit from Empress of Mars. This has to go above the diving suit and the orange spacesuit. I really like this. It looks so cool and sleek. The black with the silver, um, with the silver patterns down it. I really like this. B tier. I'm inclined to agree. I think that unless they did something super fancy with it, there's no way this is going in A tier. But this is like a solid B tier. This is good. C tier. But the thing is. C tier is where the diving suit is, and I think this is better than the diving suit. And the diving suit is better than the space suit, on Capaldi at least. So, by process of logic, this has to go in the B tier. Next up, his outfit from the Eaters of Light. Now, this is one of the few scenarios where I think the frock coat, the hoodie, the two layers of the jumper, and the t-shirt make sense... Because he's in the countryside. This actually looks like a very practical costume that you would wear whilst on location in the wilderness. I think this works. It's not my favourite. I'm thinking C tier, but it would be a high C tier. You know, the I, I, I mainly just like the frock coat. The frock coat's really, really nice. The rest of it I could take or leave, but it looks practical. So, this is like a high C tier, I'm thinking. Next up, we're nearly there, folks. Outfit 51. This is what he wears in World Enough in Time and the Doctor Falls. It's kind of like... It's tough to compare this with the Slaps Racist outfit. What episode should the 12th Doctor have said take that in? Yeah, yeah, which outfit would suit the Blue Peter badge most? I'm thinking the polka dots. <laughs> um, yeah. A, B. Yeah, I, I'm I'm feeling A, B as well. So he's got the dark navy velvet crombie with burgundy silk lining coat. He's got the waistcoat, which I think makes this look. You know, he's got the traditional white shirt with the waistcoat. If he didn't have the waistcoat, this might be a bit lower, but he has the waistcoat. With the Doc Martens slim fit trousers. Defrost Robert says S tier. I'm I'm I may be feeling A tier. The thing is, is that when you think of A tier, 
you think of these outfits which which have a particularly really memorable aspect about them you know the cravat in mummy and the orange express the polka dots and kill the moon the shark at the, at the beginning of face the raven the coat in extremis and in the lie of the land this is just a really solid 12th doctor outfit that doesn't really have anything about it particularly upstaging it i'm thinking b tier i don't think it's different from the ones that's second yeah i agree i it's very similar to the a tier one it's just not as memorable it's memorable because of the story that it's in you know it's a brilliant two-parter and he's running around like a madman destroying Cybermen with a screwdriver. It's a B tier, but it, you, that's not a, a knock on the outfit. I just think that it needs that something extra to push it into A tier. And it doesn't quite have it. Finally, this is his outfit for the final scene in The Doctor Falls. Oh, okay. It's okay. So I thought this was two different outfits because of how it was done on, on the on the document. But no, it's just it's the same outfit. The jacket's just torn up. So yes, yeah, so, yeah, this has to go and beat it then, because it, it's just the same outfit he wore before. My apologies. Um for this yeah, for this tier list, I I'd I'd probably get rid of this if I, if doing this yeah. Basically, if I were to do this tier list again, I would change the S tier to slap bracists. I would change the outfit for the execution scene in Extremis and swap it for his outfit in The Lie of the Land. And I'd just combine these two into one entry. But apart from that, I think we have a really good outfit here. I think it's better on Jodie. Jodie wears it really well. I think she wears it as well as Capaldi does. For example, I think Capaldi wears this outfit from Matt Smith maybe better than Matt Smith does. The cuffs are really pronounced though. And I know that that's a thing with previous outfits, but they're a little bit ridiculous in Twice Upon a Time. So, just for fun, some more outfits that was on this list that we didn't include. Do Clara fits next time? <laughs> Maybe not. So, the pajamas in Deep Breath. The tramp <laughs> coat in Deep Breath as well. The restaurant in Deep Breath. Uh, there's a different spacesuit in oxygen but i'm not fussed so yeah thank you so much to uh oh winnie is it cat time is winnie awake pajamas are s tier for scott no we can't have it be s tier because he stole them from a homeless man that's not a good thing to do is it winnie you can't just go around stealing outfits especially from those who have less than you oh winnie you need mm. You smell. Smelly cat. Smelly cat. What are they feeding you? Oh no, black cat, you'll upset Bolstrek. True. What can I say? The homeless man had some drip. <laughs> Absolutely. You alright, Winnie? Did you have a nice nap? Would you like a... There we go, I got you. Cat time. Winnie would still... <laughs> <laughs> Winnie would steal more clothes from the homeless. It's like that Simpsons bit. More asbestos. No, more stealing clothes from the homeless. More stealing clothes from the homeless. That's the tier list. I'm pretty happy with that. I think basically anything from Slaps Racist to B are really good outfits. These are just like the super exceptional ones. And these are the ones with something really awesome and distinct about them. Um, D tier, I don't think there's any bad costumes except maybe for... The Girl Who Died and The Magician's Apprentice slash Which is Familiar. And even then, these ones from the pilot aren't even that bad. They're just not as good as the other one from the pilot. Double check the script. I'm holding a cat, so I can't do that right now. Night, right, Winnie. I like how I can just hold it with one hand. Is this tier list publicly available? There is a link in the description below. However, what I may do, I may change the... You're right. I may change the image of this jacket and get rid of this twice upon a time look to just tidy it up a little bit more. But in the description, there is a tier list. So, so you can check this out. Oh, you're just tired, aren't you? When are we getting the Mr. Tyler's costume tier list? Yeah, all of the outfits I've worn on stream, including the creature from the Black Lagoon mask. 
uh, yeah, thank you so much to Alex for putting together the Google Doc that allowed me to compile this tier list. I massively appreciate uh, the assistance. I massively appreciate the research that you've done in putting that together. Also, Alex has sent me an Instagram message. Doctor Who Collector, uh, where I heard the trivia from. Okay, so according to this Instagram post, in 2017's The Lie of the Land, the 12th Doctor sported this costume made cloth house linen coat. It was heavily distressed, and although it, uh, and although highly anticipated after fans spotted it being worn during filming, not only was it barely ever worn again, it was later discovered that Capaldi really didn't like this coat and refused to wear it for any of the Series 10 promotional photos. Shame, really, it could have been a staple. You know, obviously his opinion matters he has to wear it whether or not he want, he enjoys wearing it or feels comfortable in it is one of the most important things but personally i i put it in a tier i put the 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 version with the waistcoat from the lie of the land that goes in a tier now chat we're going to be ranking the best malcolm tucker looks smart trousers with what appears to be just a gray polo shirt i think that this is a solid b tier Especially when you compare it to red tie, light blue shirt with the cuffs out, but still the cuffs are done up. With this, uh, with this nice little grey number. This, there we go. With the mobile, if you buy this outfit, you get the, the mobile phone with it. <laughs> um, content warning for what's definitely going to be swearing. No, get out of my fucking sight. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, I like how I could just start the video anywhere and I know I'm doing a content warning for swearing. <laughs>